I don't know what kind of sickle would let their plants get this bad, but that's uh, not important. So let's just move on. Really, this video is just going to be an attestation as to how impressive a lot of aeroids are and how much they can really bounce back from. And so we are going to try and save this bunch of plants here. So the first thing I'm going to do is take it out of its pot and really see what we're dealing with here. What do the roots look like? What does the actual stems look like? And identify if it's worth trying to save or if it's worth throwing out. Usually, I always try and save at least everything. <laughs> Because, you know, at least everything. Just because why not? Let's see what happens. You can always throw it out later. Plus, I'm a pack rat. So there is three plants in here. So that means we get three shots at bringing back this thing to life. And so really, I'm just tugging all the dead stuff off. Because anything that's actually dead or like dry, if that gets wet for the next step, it has chances of rotting. So really, just start tugging on everything. If it rips off, it just wasn't meant to be. So you don't have to fear about any more damage because the damage is already done. So just pull and tug and whatever comes off comes off whatever doesn't stays now we have a couple options here but what i want to start off with is just getting them in some water and hydrating them you can see they're all limp and bent over and that's because they're like severely uh thirsty i mean they haven't had water and god knows how long i have no idea and so i'm just trying to give them a little bit of life here and giving them some water however i'm not sure if i'm gonna leave it in water long term because there's so much like dried dead root material that I'm worried that we're just going to get a significant amount of rot if I leave it in there for any extended periods of time. If you look close at the stems, you can see how shriveled they really are, like even at the more thicker parts. So hopefully we get some hydration and kind of bring these back to life to give them a good start. All right, so I did leave these go for about two days before I checked on them again just to see how they're doing. And you can sort of see that the roots have plumped up, but most importantly, the plants have plumped up quite a bit. If you look at more of the older nodes that are on this um, plant, not the like the newest growth, that stuff is still pretty bent over, but the older stuff really have lost the wrinkles and expanded and really filled up with the water, which is what I wanted to see because that's going to give our plants more of like a base start. Now they're fully hydrated and they can sort of start working out whatever mess I got them into and they can try and grow themselves out. If you have a lot of experience with killing plants like I do, you'll notice that these roots are a little, a little too brown in my opinion. Uh, they're like on the brink of rotting that a lot of that tissue is like just not doing so hot So I really don't want to leave these in water long term because I think it's pretty much a death sentence for them At least if I'm not watching them closely So I'm actually going to try and pot these things up and that'll sort of allow them to dry out a little bit And then they'll get watered and we'll kind of keep doing that cycle while new roots sort of form And the old ones don't just like super rot or turbo rot in the actual water So that's why I'm choosing a soil approach here But you could probably cut most of them off and water propagate at this point I just went with this because that's just what I went with. I found some relatively small pots because I don't want anything massive that's going to hold a lot of water because they're on the brink of rotting. And off camera, you didn't really see it, but I did tug on some of the roots that are a little more plump. And if they ripped off, again, it was meant to be. So these look like they're missing like one or two roots, and that's why. Once I found pots that I thought were appropriate, I really am just using a typical, I would call it an aeroid mix. It's just what I have on hand. It's mostly peat moss, perlite, some of the leca balls. I think there's vermiculite in there, um, a little bit of uh, coconut core, just a lot of chunky stuff so it can breathe well. I use this for almost all my plants, so I'm pretty confident that it should work. As I pot them up, though, you can see one of them right off the bat is starting to get quite like firm. It's not as floppy. That one has a really good chance of surviving. The other one I have to stake up just because I don't want it to be bent over too much because I feel like it will restrict like the overall movement of like resources. And then the other one is pretty sad and not looking so hot. All right, today's video sponsor is Land Guard Garden Beds, and we've been lucky enough to be sponsored by them in the past, and they've really helped out the channel tremendously. This company produces steel garden beds. They're really awesome, and I did set some up a couple months ago, and so lucky for us, because they're sponsoring another video, you get to see some updates. If you are interested in more footage of the actual setup and how to get these things going, I do have a dedicated video to how to do that, but for now, let's actually look at where these have gone since the few months that they've been in my garden. As you can see from the wide shot, they are looking fantastic. Fantastic. There are plants sprawling all over them. The growth has been really incredible in these things and I'm really pleased to see how well they've like held together and everything. I haven't had any issues whatsoever. I haven't seen rust or tarnishing or anything. They look just like they did the day I set them up and that's fantastic because I really wasn't sure what to expect with these but I'm glad to see that they're perfect. One minor misstep that I made was not putting like tomato cages up or any supporting materials so a lot of my plants have sprawled around the sides. I do know you can get those separately um, from their website. They do have quite a few different trellises even like an archway. I definitely want to try that out in the future but overall everything has grown really well. I've been harvesting vegetables out of these things all summer long which has been fantastic. 
One of my main hopes and goals for these were also to have them pretty much be weed free and so far I haven't had any weeds sprout in there and that has been fantastic. All the plants that I planted in there are the only ones that are in there and it just worked really well. For my initial tests, I did grow a variety of plants in here and everything did flawlessly. Like I said, the only issues I've had is certain plants definitely should have had a trellis or some sort of tomato cage, but other than that, like all the different species I grew in here grew fantastically well and when they didn't have enough room, they just grew over the sides and I think it looks fantastic. So thanks again to our sponsor for today's video. I think it's fantastic that they've done a few videos now and I'm happy that I got to show you an update of the garden beds. If you're interested in these, there is a link in the description, so check it out. So basically I just kept them under some medium grow lights and just try to keep up with the watering and then here we are three months later and you can see there is some life and there is some death. Did you really expect someone who abused the plants initially to take very good care of them? I sure didn't. You may have already done some quick math and realized there's only two pots here and that third one that we saw previously that was really messed up did not make it very long. The second one made it for a little while, but over time the rot just overtook it. Between me not watering it well enough or too much, it just didn't make it. However, the third one that was a little more erect, like in the very beginning, that one is the one that is still surviving. This one actually made it long enough to put out brand new growth, which I was happy to see. I think some of the previous ones just got too damaged from bending over too much, and they just couldn't produce that new growth because any of like the newer like fresh like nodes that you really can't see that are sort of like not exposed i think they got too bent up and then just with the root rot and everything they were just doomed from the start but i am happy to see that we do have one that is actually growing at this point which is fantastic to see after only about three months of rehab it is sort of loose on the actual top of the pot so i do want to repot this thing and just hopefully we can get some more roots coming out of some of the additional nodes that are right now on the surface of the soil if we kind of bury it maybe we can core some more newer stuff out because a lot of the old roots are still a little risky looking. When I did pull the soil away, I noticed most of the roots were pretty solid and pretty good, and I did see some new white roots. So it's definitely continued to root, but again, not a tremendous amount for three months. So hopefully if we bury this a little deeper, those other nodes will activate and we'll get a lot more newer root growth that isn't all based off of that old damaged system. And that's kind of my hopes for planting it a little deeper. And I also want a lot more stability for this plant because you saw how it was sort of wobbling on the top. So it'll be nice to stick it in the corner and kind of let it grow up and it should get a little more stability and maybe even bigger. Skipping ahead to about 10 months later, which is crazy that this much time has passed and it's still not that great of a plant. I did abuse this one again. It seems like uh, I'm a habitual or like chronic abuser of some of my plants. So it hasn't had the best uh, recovery after those three months, but it has still done pretty good. There's a lot of green leaves here. It is still very alive. It's not too dry, although it has gone through some drought periods. However, it's got thrips. And if you look closely at one of the other leaves, it does have mealybugs too. So it's uh, it's fighting for its life. Pretty much every plant in my collection is always fighting for its life. But for the most part, it has fully recovered. And once I take care of these thrips, I'm not worried at all. This plant should be good. Really, I should get it on a pole or something so it can really start sizing up. Maybe give it some more light, some more love. But that's kind of hard with just the way the whole plant situation is in my current setup. But as I improve that, things should get better. I am glad to see at least one out of that neglected pot did survive, so we do have a nice healthy Monstera, besides the pests obviously, but pretty much all my plants have pests, so it's kind of something I'm used to. So I guess this just goes to show that you shouldn't always just throw stuff out if it looks dead. It can be kind of fun and rewarding to bring them back to life and just see what sort of techniques work and what doesn't, because you have really nothing to lose once it's already destined for the trash. It's really up from there. Once you hit rock bottom, every direction's up, so you might as well try. Thank <laughs> you.